So to, earlier today, we heard the sad news about Marcus Lamb. And instead of me telling you all what's happened, I think it's important that we hear what Joni Lamb had to say this morning on their program. Watch. Well, hello, everybody. I'm so glad that you tuned in today, and I'm glad to be sitting here. And of course, co-hosting with me, or at least at the top of the show, is my son, Jonathan Mark Lamb. How are you? I'm okay. Today has been a very tough day for our family. Today has been a tough day. I told everyone I can't talk to anyone or, or go there until I talk to you because yeah. our day star family yeah. is so important to us. Yeah. So many of you have been praying, and I want to say thank you for that. Yeah. And I wasn't going to cry, but of course you know I, I, I am yeah. going to. But yeah. this morning at 4 a.m., the president and founder of Daystar and the love of my life went to be with Jesus. Yeah. It hasn't been easy, Jonathan. Yeah. I'll tell you that he fought the good fight oh, yeah. and um, he worked really hard he really, he to, really, to stay here. He did everything he could, like to fight. I mean, he was, yeah. Marcus Duran Lamb is a fighter. He, he does not give up easily. And he did everything he possibly could to fight yes. the battle. This morning, um, basically, he was, you know, he was diagnosed with COVID and then uh, got the COVID pneumonia. But he had pre-existing conditions. He never yeah. talked about that. But um, he had diabetes, but he kept it in check. He was yeah. very healthy. He ate healthy, kept his weight down, and uh, always kept his sugar at a good level. But with trying to treat COVID and the pneumonia, uh, the different protocols that are used, including many of the protocols we talked about here on Daystar, and we use those, and I used them and breathed through COVID. Um, it caused his um, blood sugar to spike yeah. and, and, and just a decrease in his oxygen, and that's why he went to the hospital, so he could have oxygen. Um, yeah. He 100% believed in everything that we, we've talked about here on Daystar and helping so many people around the world with early protocol treatments for COVID. We still stand by that, obviously. But um, at the end of the day, this morning, I was in the room and I've been there with him the whole yeah, time. Yeah, he's been amazing. But anyway, he, um, his heart, it wasn't even the breathing. He right. was he was breathing, um, but his heart just, just gave out. Gave out right. And so they tried to resuscitate him and he did not. I was for sure that he would. I definitely will have a talk with him in heaven one day about <laughs> why he did not stay. <laughs> because, you know, I certainly want him to stay. But I will say this, he and I had some tough conversations about yeah. years from now, if one of us were to pass, and he gave me clear instructions uh, about Daystar that it would continue, and the legacy yeah. that he's passed down would continue, and the Lord has given us an amazing family that we all work together, and I'm certainly gonna continue to be yeah. involved. Um, he nor I ever talked about retirement. So yeah. um, I just wanna say, Daystar is in good hands. Yep. And a lot of the reason why it's in good hands is because of the stewardship of Marcus Lamb. Yes, stewardship of Marcus Lamb. I, I, everyone on this program tonight has a relationship with Marcus and Joni to some degree. Uh, my relationship goes back to when Marcus moved to, to Dallas, Texas to start KMPX Channel 29 over in Dallas, and uh, I helped him get on the air, Pastor Hank, and uh, it was a great time. And let me tell you what I learned from Marcus, because I, I didn't agree with him <laughs> about television. I wanted to do it one way, he wanted to do another, and he was the boss, so he won. But this is what I learned from Marcus, and I, and I want to make sure you understand something, is that he understood the power of starting small. Starting small and getting something going we didn't have, he didn't have all the equipment he needed. We went and bought Home Depot lights and extension cords and bad cameras. And he went on the air because he had made that commitment uh, for Channel 29 in Dallas. Of course, we now know it as Daystar. Uh, so many of you think perhaps that Daystar is in competition with the Victory Channel. That's not the case in the least. We were in constantly uh, in touch with Marcus and Joni. Uh, we talked to Marcus many times about Daystar and how Victory Channel can come alongside. This is how it's supposed to work. We're not in competition. There's a lot of souls to be saved, and that's why we work together. Of course, it was a shock to learn. Uh, our friend Marcus had, had passed away this morning so early. Uh, but on top of that, 
came a lot of concern. I started to hear from around the country. And gentlemen, I'm going to start with you, uh, Pastor Hank, on this. Uh, there seemed to be a nationwide, uh, I hate to put it this way, but almost a little bit of fear set in. Yeah. Uh, like, well, if Marcus Lamb, who is such a champion uh, against uh, COVID vaccines and staying healthy, you know, what does that mean? Does do, Am I going to get sick? And was it all wrong? Sure. Maybe I should go get vaccinated. Uh, how should, what should we take from this? Well, I first of all want to give honor to where honors due. First of all, I love you, Joni. I love you, Lamb family. Um, and I appreciate what you've done. And you are amazing champions today, standing up and uh, addressing uh, the world and, and, and the family. And I'm also honored to be part of their family of network. I'm on with my wife, Brenda, New Level, that airs on Thursday nights uh, for the last almost nine years. And Marcus, uh, you talked about starting off small. Our ministry wasn't known and uh, at the time, and, and Marcus gave me an opportunity. He said, Hank, I believe that you and Brenda are called to Christian television. He then later prayed for us just as we were getting ready to launch. And uh, he said, the Lord says you're going to be a voice, you and Brenda, that are going to be heard around the world. We weren't anything, but he gave us a chance. And I'm forever grateful that he gave me a platform to speak to the world. And, and I love him very dearly. But I want to just encourage you because, you know, he was a, a good friend of uh, Brenda and I and, and our ministry. I want to encourage you that are watching. Again, it's not a competition. We're in this to, to build the kingdom. And that's what Brother Copeland is doing. It's what uh, Marcus Lamb did and will continue to do. And I want to just encourage some of you that are wondering, well, what's the future of Daystar going to be? And then I will answer the question very quickly. First of all, I remember one of the last times, Pastor Gene, that I was with uh, Marcus Lamb. He invited uh, Brenda and I after the show to come up and have lunch with him. And we did. And uh, Joni said, uh, Pastor Hank, I feel like you've got a word for um of the Lord. And I said, yes, the Lord wants to prophesy and minister about the future of Daystar. And God went around and prophesied to every single one of their children, including, uh, and also uh, Joni, and told told them about the future of what each child would do while they were born, even prophesied that they were going to have, uh, Josh would have a son, which he did. Uh, people were thinking he was going to have a girl, but God even spoke about the grandchild. So Daystar's in good hands. But what do you do that are watching and, and maybe you're thinking, well, golly, if it happened to him. You know, Jesus said something to Peter that we can't forget in Luke chapter 22. He said, Peter, the enemy has tried to sift you like wheat, but don't let your faith fail. And I think that's the key that you that are watching or you that are maybe uh, are concerned because he was such a voice even regarding the, the COVID uh, and the vaccinations and things like that. Don't you allow your faith to be shaken. Every experience is different. But always remember this. Jesus said this, when you've received your strength, go and strengthen your brethren. And you've got to do what David did in the time of Ziglag. He encouraged himself in the name of the Lord his God, not just the Lord, the Lord, his God. He had a personal revelation, David did, of who God was and is. And you need to do the same. And, and um, I just, again, want to say thank you, Daystar. And uh, I love you, uh, Joni and, and the family. Yeah, amen. Uh, Mario, uh, your, your relationship with Daystar and Marcus. Well, let me just say that in this song, Raise a Hallelujah, then Bethel music, it says... I'm going to raise a hallelujah in the midst of the mystery. There's a lot of questions about what happened here, but we never allow what we don't know to dissuade us from what we do know. God right. is a good God. Faith in God produces miracles. Marcus Lamb was a man of God, and his vision saved many, many lives. And we need to let the devil know that he can't have one inch of this moment. The Bible says, give no place to the devil, no place to fear, no place to confusion, and no place to doubt. What we do is this. The Bible says precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of one of his saints. We need to echo what's going on in heaven. What's going on in heaven is a hero is getting a hero's welcome. And there is a rejoicing 
that the enemy has been defeated yet one more time by a general who did the will of God. That's what's got to be uppermost in our mind. Yeah, yeah a general indeed. Uh, Lance. Very good. Yeah, you know, I'm the same age as Marcus. I texted him November 9th. As a matter of fact, we were talking to each other, so he's a friend. And uh, But you know, I have a slightly different perspective on this. The natural one is, first of all, oh my gosh, we're, all, we're the same age. That could happen to me. That's the carnal mind that goes off that way. But the immediate... Next thought I have is the one I would encourage all of you to cultivate, and that is the remembrance that Jesus said at 33 years of age, Father, I finished the work you gave me to do. I glorified your name. Do you know what frightens me? It isn't dying younger than 100 years old. What concerns me is not finishing the work the Father gave me to do. And so what we should be looking for is not the duration of life, but the fullness of the life that was lived and the duration it had. What Marcus did, building the vast uh, empire of, of ministry media that he did, and this is in, a, in an unconventional way. He did it with a different strategy than other, other uh, networks. It accomplished the work the Father gave him to do. And so for all of us, we need to know that we've got a work that we're called to do. And when that work is done, then in essence, the most important part about life on earth is accomplished. And we have Jesus as an example. But the other part of this is a very natural thing, Gene. And that is that we don't want to be confusing anyone regarding this vaccine conversation. Rand Paul had a, a, a great analysis. And I would just encourage you, some of you will get upset with it, but hey, listen, this might help some other people. He said, I don't think it's a good thing to put yourself at risk with this vaccine if you're young. Why would you mess with it? You don't know what the, pro what the problematics are going to be. But if you're 65 years old or older and you have a secondary condition of some sort, he said, well, then you would be the candidate that might want to be looking at this because you're not looking at, um, you know, 40 years from now or is it going to affect your ability to have children? You're in a different season of life. So, uh, so I, th I would like you all to go take a look at Dr. McCullough's research and see at what stage of life you're in, because we're certainly not trying to, to create uh, an anti-mentality. We're trying to create a wisdom mentality. Uh, wisdom mentality, indeed. Uh, it was interesting that we, uh, I had already decided that we were going to talk about COVID. The majority of what we were talking about tonight was already planned. And uh, then this news today, just this confirmation, ladies and gentlemen, we have to keep our foot on the gas. I was so glad that Joni said today what she did on television in the midst of her obvious sorrow and, and sadness was saying that we still stand by what we believe. They stand beside, uh, they haven't changed their position on anything and neither are we. We're going to keep going. You know, back in April, April 11th of this year, we invited Marcus Lamb and the singers and Joni to come be a part of Eagle Mountain International Church church service. And so we went back in the archives and we pulled just a clip. I want you to see a little bit. Now, you may know Marcus from the, uh, from the television program celebration and all that he's done through the years, which is great. But his heart, if you knew Marcus at all, you knew this man was a preacher. He wanted to preach. He wanted to go preach somewhere. And he lived to preach. And I just wanted to leave you with this little snippet of Marcus Lamb, at Eagle Mountain Church on April 11th. But all Jesus is life's greatest companion and he will never give up on you. It doesn't matter if you're walking down dusty roads or traveling down streets of gold, whether you're living in poverty or you're living in prosperity, whether it's night or whether it's day, whether your bank account's low or your blood pressure's high, it doesn't matter because he said in Matthew 28 and 20, regardless of the circumstances of your life, I will go with you all of the way, even to the end of the world. If he's going with you to the end of the world, World, that means he's with you if you wreck your car. He's with you if you lose your job. He's with you if your house burns down. He's with you if you can't pay your bills. He's with you even if you find out you've got cancer. He said in Hebrews 13 and 5, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Marcus Lamb, what a true general in media ministry. And, you know, I love that gentleman. You know, seeing Marcus preach, I'm like, 
That is a Church of God boy mm -hmm. through and through. You see it coming out. He was having a good time. And if I remember right, we mm -hmm. had two services that Sunday. People got saved mm -hmm. in both services. Mm -hmm. He loved seeing people come to Christ. What a legacy he leaves for all of us as well as the Lamb family. Now, where we go from here is that we can't get in fear, as Pastor Hank said in the beginning, and we can't stay there. That's we right. have to listen. This race is a long race. This isn't a sprint. We have to mm -hmm. take care of what we have to take care of, but we've got to stay engaged. We've got to stay involved. We've got to stay in part of who we are as believers. We're not letting up. We're going to see God's will be done in these United States of America and around the world through this ministry and everybody on this program. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me for this expanded edition. We thank God for Marcus Lamb and all he does. And we look forward to the new era at Daystar.